بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد ايها الاحباب the question arises should we talk about things that we have knowledge of such as opposing shirk and kufr when we come across it or should we avoid debate altogether for example, there was a person who recently said that there's no difference between the groups and sects in Islam, and we're all Muslims and we should unite. We should unite. Is it our duty as Muslims to say something when we see uh, a statement like this, or we hear a statement like this, which is not based on knowledge, and with good manners and good preaching? based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the answer to that, ayul ahbab, as our ulama state and as it comes from the salaf of this ummah, like Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala, who we spoke about and explained some of his statements regarding debating and how the salaf of this ummah, they hated and detested getting into arguments and debates and controversy. However, Ayyul Ahbab, that doesn't mean that we reject or that we do not ever discuss about the religion. Of course, we give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, we command the good and forbid the evil. And we're going to briefly talk about that. Because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ رَاءَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَلَيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَدْعُ فَلِمَانُ هُوَهُ مُسْلَمُ In this hadith of Sahih Muslim that was narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تلا عنه He said that the, I heard the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say مَنْ رَعَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكُرًا فَلِغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ Whoever sees an evil then change it with his hand فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ And if he's not able to do so, then change it فَيُغَيْرُهُ uh, بِلِسَانِهِ Then change it with his heart. And if he is, uh, uh, and, and then if he is unable to do so, then he should change it with his heart. And that is the weakest of Iman, the weakest form of faith. Letting us know that faith, Iman has different levels. And Iman also not only has different levels, it has different parts. Because the Messenger والسلام, in this hadith, he mentioned changing the munkar with the hand, showing us his physical, out, uh, physical actions. Wabi lisan, and then he mentioned the tongue, so speaking out. So speaking is a part of the man. Saying, La ilaha illallah, wa ishadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Uh, and all of these acts of ibadah that we have on our tongue in dhikr al-Azzawaj that these are all a part of Iman and the third thing the Messenger وسلم, mentioned in this hadith which is also a part of uh, a component component of Iman is the Prophet والسلام, said and if you're not able and if he's unable to do so or if you're unable to do so then change it with the heart and that's the weakest form of Iman. Letting us know the heart is a part of Iman, of course. As m even the Christians believe that, uh, and Christians and Jews and others believe that faith is comprised of the heart. But Ahl Sunnah, the Prophet والسلام, showed us, and what comes from the Quran and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah illustrates for us that Iman in Islam is comprised of all those things actions of the limbs statements of the tongue and deeds of the heart all of that comprise is comprised of iman ayla bab moving on to the to back to what we were discussing you know should we talk about those things we have knowledge of yes we should because the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered us min ra min kumkarin whoever from among you sees a munka and the ulama they they mention with regards to this hadith in their various explanations is that one of the things for ibadah 
One of the conditions for ibadah is qudra, meaning that you, you have the, the ability to change the munkar. And that's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith, he said, مَنْ رَاءَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَلْيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ So, he said, whoever sees a munkar amongst you, then change it with his hands. If he is not able to do so, so again, letting us know that a, a shart or a condition for changing the wrongdoing is qudra, is qudra, istata'a meaning that you have the ability to do so. <coughs> and so that is one of the conditions. Another very important aspect of changing the uh, of changing the good and forbidding the evil, and in fact all of our acts of ibadah are, or uh, qudra for all of our acts of ibadah, qudra. But as far as the... Um, a very important principle all throughout the Sharia, sharia is the principle of uh, looking at the maslaha wa mafsada, meaning look at, at the the benefits and the harm of something. So, for example, if we have a situation where a person is doing a munkar, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned this uh, in one of his books, in his Mijmu'ah Fatawa, or maybe it was Minhaj al-Sunnah, uh, about the Tartars, you know, the Tar, the, the Mongols and, and, and those other uh, people, that they, when they were killing, they had a lot of power, and they were killing Muslims, and they were slaughtering the Muslims. And it goes, it was related that I believe Shaykh Islam and maybe some of his students, they passed by some of these people. And these people were getting drunk. They were drinking alcohol and they were drunk. And the people said, you know, you know, oh, Shaykh Islam, this is a paraphrase of, of the, the story. Why don't you command the good and forbid the evil? You know, tell these people, you know, they're doing haram. They're drinking alcohol. And he said, he related basically that if he were to do this one act of good of changing this munkar that uh, that stopping by not changing their uh changing what they're doing physically and not speaking out against it they've done they've taken the akhaf darain they've taken the the uh lighter the lesser of the two evils because yes they're drinking alcohol and that's sinful but it's more sinful that because we know these people are bloodthirsty, that if we command the good and forbid the evil on them, speak against what they're doing, they will kill us. They will slaughter, they will go and kill Muslims with their swords. But since they're drunk, rejoicing in their drunkenness, then we leave them. And that is the more uh, beneficial. So uh, there's another fifth principle that we... Uh, we put forth the um, we put forth the the good over the the over the evil over the over the facet of something that it's more important to uh, you know when looking at an issue like this that we we look at the whole issue and we look at the harms and the benefits. If the benefit of enjoining the right and, and forbidding the evil is better, is, is, is better than the harm of, of doing that action, then we, we enjoin the right and forbid the evil. But if enjoining the good and forbidding the evil will cause a greater harm, then we, in that situation, we would leave it. We would choose the lesser of the two evils, which would be to keep silent and hate it in your heart and have the weaker form of Iman in this situation. Why? Because it'll be worse to speak out in that situation and have the people killed by these brutal and vicious people. So this gives us an idea, Ayul Ahbab, about the importance of commanding the good and the forbidding the evil, and that it's a duty upon all of us. 
also another aspect of this or another important thing is that we have knowledge to do so, that we're able to enjoin the right and forbid the wrong, that we have knowledge of the thing that we are calling to, you know, the Tao, and we have knowledge of the people, you know, an understanding of the people that we're dealing with, and we have knowledge of the Munkar, because you can't command the good if you don't know what good is. You can't forbid the evil if you don't know what evil is, if you can't distinguish between good and evil. You can't say this is sunnah and this is bid'ah if you don't know, have knowledge about what is sunnah and what is bid'ah. And this brings up another important point, and I've ran into this many times with some of our brothers and sisters, may Allah forgive us and them, where they don't have knowledge and they have the zeal and they want to command the good and forbid the evil. So they don't have the knowledge about a particular evil. I can recall a particular brother, may Allah preserve us in him and forgive us in him, where he was very eager, very upset that the people were not uh, doing something with related to, it was something related to the Salat. He didn't, he was unaware that there is more than one view based on the Quran and the Sunnah, based on the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or there, there was more than one thing that was actually permissible, that both things were mentioned in the Sunnah. And he was very eager and very uh, staunch about this. So we have, were called to arbitrate and to let him know that you're, you, you have a limited understanding of this, Jazallah Khairan, for your zeal. But you need to know that there's more than one aqwal and there's more uh, details to this issue. Another situation, a particular brother, may Allah forgive us in him, in the masjid, he stood up with anger and jealousy for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the prayer. They called the iqama, but they called the iqama in a way in which he was unfamiliar of. And this way that they called it was mentioned in, I believe, uh, Sahih Muslim or Sahih Bukhari. But the brother was unaware that he only knows what he grew up and learned in Islam about what the Iqamah should sound like. That, you know, it has to be mentioned twice. But from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sometimes also that it was mentioned uh, once in the Iqamah. So the brother stood up when the Imam, after they called the Iqamah, and he said, you, with all kind of emotion, and he stood up and he said, that this is wrong. Why are you always playing with the deen? Why is everyone playing with the deen? And everyone, you know, something about the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in fact, he didn't know the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this brings up the point, Ayyul Ahbab, that we have to have knowledge of the people we're giving da'wah to. We have to have knowledge of what we're giving da'wah to. And if we're forbidding evil, we have to have knowledge of forbidding of what is evil and what is sunnah and what is bid'ah. And what is good? And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with al nafid as and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to command the good and forbid the evil in a manner that pleases him and based on the kitab was sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with good and righteous preaching and based on knowledge and fiqh was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.